Hello everyone, Spirit Senior here. Just wanted to do this video because while all the crazy impeachment garbage disastrous movie is going on, President Trump has been busy. I love the way this president works because he doesn't let anything affect him. He just keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing. And he keeps, he just cares for the people. He is for the people. And you notice that with every little thing that this man does. Everything he does is for the people. And I think he's a brilliant, brilliant man. And that is why I really love this president. Thank you very much, everybody. It's a great honor. The stock market is up big today. Set a new record. I think it's the 22nd time this year. And it's over 100 times for the time that we're in office. We've said over 100. I think it's substantially more than 100. We'll get the exact number, because I know you wouldn't want me to have that wrong. They don't like that. But uh, we're up over 100 times for the stock market. And that means jobs. It means companies are moving back into the United States that left. Uh, we have many, many companies coming back. The employment numbers are at a record. The uh, we're very close, and uh, we just got a new number on African-American employment is the best it's ever been. You could say employment or unemployment. They're the best numbers they've ever been. So we're very proud of what's happened uh, with our economy. A few months ago, you were predicting a recession. Uh, perhaps someday there'll be a recession, but we have a long way to go. The consumer has never been stronger, and we're going to make the consumer even stronger, yet with transparency, because they're going to get much better pricing at hospitals, so I think we can probably add this to the number. Uh, you saw a median household income for President Bush eight years was $450. For President Obama, for eight years, eight years, think of that, was $975. For President Trump, a little over two and a half years when they did the final number, was $5,000, and they add to that 2000 Thanks to Kevin and everybody. Thank you, Kevin. You're behind me someplace, right? They had 2,000 or 2,500, Kevin. What would you say? Yeah, right about there, Mr. Right there. So let's add 2,000. And then add 3,000 for regulation and add something for the energy savings. So you have $10,000. So it's 400 and $975. That's for eight and eight. And then for two and a half years, it's 10,000. Uh, that's not bad, but the consumer is very powerful. And uh, this is going to make them more powerful. So welcome, everyone. This afternoon, we celebrate something that I'm very proud of, another major victory in our mission to deliver great health care at a price that you can afford. This will have a tremendous impact on prices. A certain gentleman who's in the room, who will say a couple of words, actually said, this is more important than health care. And when he said that, my ears really perked up. And I listened, and they were right, and they gave me plenty of examples. And that person recently got the Presidential Medal of Freedom. His name is Art Laffer, and he's a very talented guy. Where is Art? Is he here? Yes? I'm sort of short Hello. today. I didn't, see you. I didn't see you back there. Let's stand up here. A uh, great gentleman, and uh, you brought a man here who's the king of that world. And uh, hello, how are you? That's the guy. And you made that statement to me, more important than health care. That was a big statement. As soon as I heard that, I said, that sounds good to me. It's transparency. So I signed, as you know, an executive order, historic. And we're requiring price transparency in health care, forcing companies to compete for your business. It's a very important thing that we've done here. I don't think it'll be covered by you, but it will be in the years to come. Our goal was to give patients the knowledge they need 
about the real price of health care services. They'll be able to check them, compare them, go to different locations, so they can shop for the highest quality care at the lowest cost. And this is about high-quality care. You're also looking at that. You're looking at comparisons between talents, which is very important. And then you're also looking at cost. And in some cases, you'll get the best doctor for the lowest cost. That's a, that's a good thing. Today, I'm proud to announce two new actions implementing that order. First, we are finalizing the rule that will compel hospitals to publish prices publicly online for everyone to see and to compare. So you're able to go online and compare all of the hospitals and the doctors and the prices and, I assume, get resumes on doctors and see who you like. And the good doctors, like I assume these two guys are fantastic doctors, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And the bad doctors, I guess they have to go and hide someplace. I don't know. Maybe they don't do so well. I don't know. But if they're not good, we, we are more interested in the good ones. It's called rewarding talent. Second, we're putting forward a proposed rule to require health insurance providers to disclose their pricing information to consumers. We're giving American families control of their health care decisions, and the freedom to choose that care is right before them on the Internet and elsewhere, but on the Internet. Very, very open, very transparent. That's why it's called transparency. And this has been done on small basis on individual hospitals. In fact, Art, you were telling me about that uh, with your hospital, that uh, you're on a board of a hospital that did this. I'd like you, actually, before I go further, I'd like you to talk about that just for a second. Art Laffer. Art, sure. just mention that if you could. Yeah, you've got to lower it really far. <laughs> Sorry about that. The, uh, let, let me, if I can, just say I was on the chairman of the board of Centennial Hospital. Uh, we had some problems. But when you look at this, this is the biggest revolution I've seen in, uh, in, in generations. I mean, and as opposed to most revolutions, this revolution saves lives. It doesn't cost lives. And in this revolution, it saves money. You don't have to spend money. And uh, what you've seen here before is that we have no transparency whatsoever in medical. It's like the hermit kingdom of industries. Uh, you don't know what the price is. You don't know what the outcome is. And you don't know what the inputs are. Uh, what this does is this pulls away the veil and allows people to see exactly what they can and what they do. And if I can say, I think this will lead to a phenomenal change in the U.S. outcome of employment output production. It's just the one of the industries that desperately needs this. I, I, I'll stop about here, but the last one I can remember being involved with was with Lady Thatcher when she privatized coal, steel, and the railroads. I mean, the changes there were Sir Keith Joseph. This outdoes all of those revolutions, sir. It's the most amazing of all time. And it takes real leadership to do it and real... Uh, real practitioners to be able to get it through. And Good. Secretary Azar is a great practitioner, and my buddy Larry, C Larry uh, uh, Van Horn is also a great practitioner, as well as Larry Cutlow, by the way. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I'd like to have Larry maybe say a few words and, and explain what this is that we're being... Sure, Mr. Uh, President. No well, th this is a momentous day. Uh, Americans, year over year, have been faced with higher and higher health care costs facing a higher and higher obligation to pay for those out of their own wallets without information around the price and the quality associated with that. The charges that have been put out are fictitious. Nobody pays the charges. This effort is to make real prices transparent. The net allowed amounts that drive the decision making for patients every day will now be in their hands so they can make better trade-offs and have hopefully more money in their wallets and their paychecks to do to pay for all other goods and services they need to live their lives. So this is a very momentous day, and I appreciate the efforts of the administration all the way through in terms of being able to follow through and execute this. And we did it max, right? We didn't do a smaller We version. did it max. This a plus. Is, it's A plus. I kept saying <laughs> A plus. There are versions of this. I said, no, I don't want the C or the D. I want the A plus. And we did it the A plus, so I'm very happy with that. And I think you're going to see things. It's kicking in immediately. It'll kick in as of today, uh, but it's going to really start going during the course of the year, the following year, this year coming, and uh, you'll see some results that are going to be actually incredible in terms of costs coming down, and I think in terms of the quality of the care, because you're picking people that you'd want to be with. This afternoon, we're grateful to be joined by Secretary Steve Mnuchin, wherever you may be, Steve. Hi, oh, Steve. Hi, Steve. Secretary Jean Scalia, and I hear you're really doing a job over there, huh? Doing Labor's doing okay. Your numbers are certainly doing very good. It's a good time to be Department of Labor, right? This is a great story to tell. 
Right. Thank you very much. Good. Secretary Alex Azar. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And Administrator Seema Verma. Thank you very much, Seema. Seema. It's an unusual group today. They're spread all over the place. I also want to welcome Representatives Kevin Brady, Michael Burgess, and Greg Walden. They've been so fantastic on getting us to a really good position uh, with the taxes. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing a major middle income tax cut uh, if we take back the House. And we'll be talking about that sometime later. But we're going to be doing a very major middle income tax cut, mostly devo devoted to middle income, uh, who have really been big beneficiaries of the tax cut we did, which was the largest uh, in the history of our country. But we're doing a major tax cut for the middle income. And that'll be subject, obviously, to take taking over the House because Democrats like tax increases, not tax cuts. I also want to thank our state leaders. We have a lot of state leaders here today at the highest level, and I want to thank them for being here. And a special thanks again to highly respected economists, Dr. Art Laffer, Dr. Larry Van Horn. And really, it was those two people that came to my office. We were talking about Art, and we were all congratulating him because he did an incredible job over a lot of years with Ronald Reagan and beyond. And when I said, uh, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian award you can get. He told me this little story about a certain hospital he was involved with where they did this, and every hospital's had just incredible experience with it. And I said, tell me more. And then we got involved with Larry and Larry Kudlow also, by the way, and we had a little group of four people that talked about it a lot. And I think it's going to have a tremendous impact. And again, the statement was made, this is bigger than health care. And I think it will be. I think it'll be more meaningful in many ways. You'll save so much money, and you'll get the care that you want, and you'll choose the doctor you want, which was not possible despite the many pleas. You know, you can have your plan, and you can have your doctor. Well, they turned out to be uh, untrue statements about Obamacare. For decades, hospitals, insurance companies, lobbyists, and special interests have hidden prices from consumers so they could drive up costs for you and you had no idea what was happening. You'd get bills that were unbelievable, and you have no idea why. For example, researchers found that for the same MRI at the same hospital, patients were charged anywhere from $248 to $2,500, so 10 times more in the same hospital. I assume that would be different doctors within the same hospital. I don't know if the hospitals are going to like me too much anymore with this, but that's okay, right? That's okay. I think the doctors are going to, actually. In the Boston area, the price of delivering a baby can cost anywhere from roughly $4,700 to nearly $16,000. One survey found that within a single metro area, the highest negotiated price for a simple blood test was roughly 40 times more than the lowest price. They were given exactly the same service, uh, in some cases sent them to the same labs and would charge 40 times more money. Under the new price transparency rule, we are finalizing today, and it'll be all finalized. It is finalized. It'll be put out today. All of that will change. Hospitals will soon be required to publish the price of everything from individual medical supplies to the total cost of common procedures. Next, we will bring much-needed price transparency to insurance companies. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. This will allow you to see your out-of-pocket costs and other vital price information before you go in for treatment. So you're going to know what it's going to be, and you're going to be able to have lots of choices, both in terms of doctors, hospitals, and price. And we're stopping American patients from just getting pure and simple two words, very simple words, ripped off, because they've been ripped off for years, for a lot of years. With us today is Melissa Yearl who works for a company that benefits from price transparency. And, Melissa, could you come up and say a few words? Thank you, right? yeah. Thank you Melissa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Melissa Ural, and I am the Vice President of Human Resources for HB Global. We are an employee-owned mechanical contracting company. Transparent Pricing Initiative aligns with our ownership model because it allows employees to get the care that they need at the cost that they want. Currently, we are partnering with a broker to work and 
and negotiate prices for surgeries and other procedures at local surgical centers. This allows our employees to know what the procedure or what the cost will look like when they walk through the door. This also allows our employees to get great care at a fraction of the cost with the same quality and standard of care that they would have gotten and they won't receive any surprise bills. Right now, we have some price transparency behind the scenes, but with full price transparency up front, our employees can make the best decisions possible. We wouldn't expect our employees to go buy a car or a house without knowing the price up front. Why should their health care be any different? I want to thank the President for bringing this important initiative to the front. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Melissa. We're also joined by Kara Bockel, who works for the same company and benefited when her employer shopped for the best price on a surgery, a surgery that she needed. And I'd like to have Kara come up and please tell us about it. Kara, please. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Kara Bakel, and I work for HB Global along with Melissa. And in January of this year, I had surgery on my ankle. I'm the sole provider of my two-year-old son, so this impact was huge for his and my day-to-day -day life. When I initially went to an orthopedic urgent care, I had no idea what I was going to pay, no idea what the costs were going to be. I just know that I needed to get help. I ended up with a bill for over $1,000. This was an unexpected expense that my family now had to endure, and it had a huge impact on us. I was, it was a huge stressor to know that I needed surgery and not know what the cost was gonna be and how it was gonna impact my life. Thankfully, my company was able to work with a brokerage firm and shop around to know what prices were gonna be beforehand. With insurance, the claim my company would have paid was $19,500, and we wouldn't have known that cost until afterwards. By shopping around beforehand, we knew the claim was gonna be $7,800, which is a 60% price difference, and it was at zero cost to me. I was even able to get the care at the same facility that I was going to go to if I would have used my insurance. I wanna thank the president for making healthcare more transparent so that others in my situation don't have to have these unexpected unexpected financial surprises and hardships. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kara. Also with us is Dr. Rick Schultz, Chief Medical Officer at Texas Free Market Surgery. Doctor, I'd like to have you come up and say a few words about uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Thank you, Dr. Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having us here today. This is a very exciting day. I'd like to take a minute to talk about stewardship. First, I'd like to thank Jesus for allowing me the opportunity and charging me with good, being a good steward of the opportunity and the abilities to practice orthopedic surgery in Texas for the last 20 years. I'd also like to thank the President for his leadership and stewardship in this effort and the fact that since he's been elected, he trusts Americans to be courageous and make smart decisions with their own money and their own health care and he knows that we're smart enough to make good decisions now. This policy, this transparency, will be the fuel for healthcare innovation, very similar to what we're doing with Texas Free Market Surgery and Texas Medical Management. Right now, every day, we take good care of patients at a very fair price, and it's completely transparent. This is not something in the future, this is something we're doing today. If you don't believe me, just check out our website. Finally, I'd really like to challenge the Americans that this is a right that you're getting back to know the price of your health care. This is going to be a fight. This is very disruptive. The people who are currently making a lot of money off of us are going to fight this tooth and nail. If you aren't ready to fight for this, then don't complain when it gets taken away from you. Mr. President, thank you for stepping into the gap, taking the slings and arrows, and helping get this going. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think if I could, I'd like to have Kevin Brady come up just for a second and talk about what we've done with the individual mandate and how that's uh, just a part of our, that's a small part, but it's a very big part in terms of health care. 
uh, what we do, did with respect to our tax cuts and our reforms. And you might want to discuss the individual mandate. Getting rid of it was such a big deal. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, Mr. President. So first, thank you for being the president who led on letting people keep more of what they earn so they can afford health care costs, utility costs, college costs, all of which has seemed to go up. Uh, secondly, thank you for when we saw the failings of the Affordable Care Act, especially forcing average Texans, average Americans into buying health care they couldn't use and couldn't afford, you stepped forward with Congress to eliminate effectively that mandate. So, which was another tax cut on the American people. You've also created association health plans because if you're in a small business, if you work for a small business or have one, you've been left behind under the Affordable Care Act. Your plans that allow our small businesses to join together to afford health care the way the big companies do, they're cutting prices 30 and 40 percent, making health care affordable again, hugely helpful. And then today, as Art Laffer has pointed out, and you too, Mr. President, look, um, patients are confused. Families don't know what things cost. You can't shop around and you don't understand the price. This pulling back the curtain on health care prices will help competition occur, give us as families and patients choices ahead of time, and will ultimately lower the health care costs. And, and I'll close with this. It's easy to have quality care or affordable care. The goal is to have both. Making these prices transparent allow our families and our businesses to have quality care and affordable at the same time. This really is transformational. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You Thank you. Thank you so it all sort of fits in. It's like a puzzle. And I see my friend uh, Greg. I can't believe you're going to be leaving Congress uh, one of these days. I was so disappointed to see that, but you're fantastic. And we all work together with. Uh, Everybody, all of us, all of you, come on up here, the two of you. I'd like you to discuss Right to Try a little bit. And, uh, I mean, you think of that, it's really a very important part of health care, the ultimate part of health care. And for 45 years, they've been trying to get it passed, and they couldn't do it. And Greg Walden, the three of us, plus a lot, we've, uh, we've got it done. Congressman, here, here. thank you very much. Here, here. Thank, thank you very you, much. President. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. We've never had a president lean further, farther, forward on behalf of patients than President Donald Trump. And we finally got into law, we finally got into law right to try. Now you're going to get in place right to know. We should have the right to know what these things cost. This is, I was here with you when you talked about surprise medical billing, and we are very close to legislating on that, Mr. President, and that is a huge win for consumers. This is a huge win for consumers. You're doing the right thing, and Dr. Mike Burgess, who was my chairman of the subcommittee on health care, now the top Republican on health care, has really been a leader in this effort as well, Mr. President, and your team, um, working with the secretaries and SEMA and others, have been at the forefront of this. And Americans are benefiting. And the one thing I hear about is what Kevin Brady talked about. We want affordable care. We want innovation. But we have to be able to afford it. And you can't know what things cost if they won't tell you. And it's all hidden uh, back behind the curtain. So, Mr. President, thanks for your leadership and your team's leadership. Thank you. Michael, say with a few words, please. Well, what I hear from constituents all the time, I practiced medicine for 25 years. They're concerned with the cost and complexity of health care. This is a major step major step in delivering on that promise for patients. Look, there's another party in town that just wants to take away all your choices and give you one choice. This president is trying to expand your choices. That's a better choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the actions that we're announcing today are only the latest steps in our campaign to deliver great health care for American patients. Our efforts to reduce the price of pres prescription drugs, and I don't know if you know that, but this is the first time, uh, Secretary Azar, I think in 51 years that prices have actually gone down yep. for prescription drugs. So that's uh, quite an achievement. And if we had the uh, help of the Democrats, which we don't, uh, it's a shame because we could knock drug prices down so low. Uh, we will be giving uh, states the right to go to other countries to buy their drugs because other countries, because they don't have these crazy arcane rules that we could fix so quickly if we had the help of the Democrats, but they want the price of drugs to stay high, I suppose. But we brought it down the most in 51 years, and uh, we're very proud of that, but we can bring them down much more, and 
One of the things I'm doing is, as an example, Canada will pay much less for drugs because they don't have to pay for research and development. So their pricing is much cheaper, so we'll buy. I'm, I'm working with Ron DeSantis in Florida and some other governors, great governors, and they're going to buy from other countries and skip all of the nonsense. And I think ultimately what that's going to do is the drug companies will bring the price of their drugs down, or they'll buy from other countries. That's okay, too. The same pill made in the same factory, made by the same company, sells for 50, 60, and 70 percent less in one country than it does in another. And we're always the high country. So I'm going to be giving governors the right very shortly to uh, buy, I've already given some the right, to buy their, their uh, prescription drugs from other countries. And we avoid, we skirt a lot of a lot, that probably sounds like a pretty good idea to you. What do you think, huh? Love it. You as the great economist. So anyway, so the actions that we're announcing today are the latest steps, our efforts to reduce the price of prescription drugs. We're going to have some tremendous results. So we could do it so simply if we uh, had any kind of help from the Democrats, but uh, they're doing so many other things, namely one, wasting a lot of time and very bad for our country what they're doing. And they should approve USMCA, by the way. It's the greatest trade deal ever made. And they should stop playing games. And, you know, Mexico signed it many months ago. Canada keeps calling me. When, when is this deal going to happen? Is this deal going to happen? And it's sitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk for about uh, three months, four months. Uh, na nervous Nancy. She needs a little nervous energy to get it done. Because all she has to do is put it up. She's got plenty of Democrat votes. A lot of Democrats are pushing her, but she doesn't want to do it because she doesn't want to have a victory for the American people, and that's all it is. Uh, so either she does it or she doesn't do it. But Mexico wants to know what's happening. Canada wants to know what's happening. They could live without it because it's a great deal for us. They could live without it, and they want to know what's going on. We eliminated the Obamacare individual mandate penalty, and we're expanding affordable alternatives which cost up to 60 percent less than Obamacare plans, and it could be even quite a bit higher than that in some cases. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions, and as I've been saying lately, and also patients with pre-existing physicians. <laughs> I thought that was good. I made it in one speech. I said, you know, people like that, but it's true, because you didn't have your doctor, you didn't have your plan, and now you have the plan and you have the doctor, so it's pretty good. In everything we do, my administration is fighting for the rights of American consumers, the well-being of American patients, and the health of American people. We're taking on the bureaucrats in more ways than one. You probably noticed that, right? We're taking on a lot of bureaucrats. We're taking on the insurance companies, and we're taking on the special interests. And that's one of the difficulties I have in Washington, because I've taken on a lot of the establishment, and a lot of the politicians are uh, taken care of by the establishment, and they don't like that I take on the establishment, but I'm taking it on for the consumer, for the American people, and that's why you see prices going down, and you haven't seen anything yet. Things are going to happen that will be shocking, but there are people in Washington, as I say, there are people in the swamp that don't like what I'm doing for that reason. We will not rest until every American has access to the highest quality, most affordable health care anywhere in the world. And again, I want to thank you all, and I'd like to ask Secretary Azar to come up and say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you for your leadership. You asked us, as you said earlier, to deliver A-plus transparency in health care. Well, right now, our system wouldn't even get a passing grade on transparency. Patients are at the mercy of a shadowy system with no control over their care. But thanks to your leadership and your transparency executive order, we're changing that. The changes you described, what we're doing at HHS, will be revolutionary to our health care system. Perhaps the biggest single change that President Trump has made to Americans' health care experience. More than 70% of the most common hospital services are shoppable. We're delivering American patients the information they need to make the right choices for themselves. That's crucial to the kind of system that we're building for American patients with affordable, personalized, patient-centric care that puts you in control and treats you like a human being and not like a number. So thank you, Mr. President, for delivering American patients the affordability that you need, the options and control that you want, and the quality that you deserve. 
A key leader in this work has been Administrator Verma, who will now say a few words. Seema? Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the President, because people have been talking about price transparency forever. We all know that what's been going on in the healthcare system has been wrong. It's not fair that patients don't know the cost of the services that they're going to get. But only one man has been willing to stand up to special interests and do what's right for patients and put them back in control of their health care. So thank you, thank President you. Trump. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So after many, many years, we finally have transparency. It's going into effect today. It will have a tremendous uh, impact. It will sort of go in, say, in sections and stages, but it all begins today. And within about 12 months, I think it'll be fully implemented, and we can even say probably a shorter period of time than that. Some of it's uh, complex and some of it's very easy, but it's all very good. It's, uh, there's never been anything like this. So the word is transparency, and I love transparency in many ways. And uh, this is going to be something that's going to be um, it's going to be incredible for the consumer, for the patient. I think it's going to be really good for the good doctors, maybe not so good for other doctors. I think it's going to be really good for the great hospitals, frankly. And it's very exciting. And it's something that, again, Art, I want to thank you very much because uh, you really did bring it to my attention. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, please. Mr. President, uh, what do you say to Democrats to say you were witness tampering this morning when you uh, made that tweet. You, you don't want to talk about that. transparency? Well, you know, I'll talk about transparency. I like transparency here, and I'm the most transparent president in history. And I'll tell you about what tampering is. Tampering is when a guy like Shifty Shift doesn't let us have lawyers. Tampering is when Shift doesn't let us have witnesses, doesn't let us speak. I've been watching today for the first time I started watching, and it's really sad when you see people not allowed to ask questions, it's totally, nobody's ever had such horrible due process. There was no due process. And I think, it's, I think it's considered a joke all over Washington and all over the world. The Republicans are given no due process whatsoever. We're not allowed to do anything. It's a disgrace what's happening. But you know what? The American public understands it, and that's why the poll numbers are so good, and that's why other things are so good. What they're doing in Washington with that hearing, and by the way, it's a political process. It's not a legal process. So if I have somebody saying I'm allowed to speak up, if somebody says about me, we're not allowed to have any kind of representation, we're not allowed to have almost anything, and nobody's seen anything like it. In the history of our country, there has never been a disgrace like what's going on right now. So you know what? Uh, I, w I have the right to speak. I have freedom of speech, just as other people do. But they've taken away the Republicans' rights. And I watched today as certain very talented people wanted to ask questions, and they weren't even allowed to ask questions. Republicans, they weren't allowed to ask questions. It's a very sad thing. Go ahead. Sir, with your freedom, sir, with your freedom, were you trying to intimidate uh, Ambassador Yovanovitch? I just want to have a total, I want freedom of speech. That's a political process. The Republicans have been treated very badly. And I watched a little bit of it today. I wasn't able to yesterday because we had the president of Turkey here, and I wasn't able to watch much. I watched some of it this morning. I thought it was a disgrace. When we have great Republican representatives, people elected by the people, and they're not allowed to even ask a question, they're not allowed to make a statement, we're not allowed to have witnesses, we're not allowed to have legal counsel, White House counsel, it's a disgrace and it's an embarrassment to our nation. Do you believe your tweets and your words can be intimidated? Yes, go ahead, please. Sir, do you believe your tweets and words can be intimidated? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Sir, do you believe please. your tweets and words can be intimidating? I don't think so at all. Go ahead. Well, I shouldn't be. In fact, I thought last night it ended, because last night I was in Louisiana, where we're going to hopefully elect a great governor, Republican governor. And I was getting off the plane, and they handed me a statement that was just made by the foreign minister and president of the Ukraine. And Ukraine, they came out loud and clear that there was no linkage whatsoever, not even a little bit. And you saw it. You all saw it. I said, oh, well, that, in, that ends the impeachment. And you people don't even report it. Look, the press is unbelievably dishonest. That was a major statement put out last night by the foreign minister of Ukraine and also by the president of Ukraine. 
and you don't even report it, it's a disgrace. Because it said there was absolutely no linkage. We had a perfect conversation. And I also, because of transparency, whether it's medical transparency or just transparency uh, generally, I also put out today a statement. And in the statement, we released, and then Congressman Nunes read a call that I had with the President of Ukraine. And it was a great call. It was a very nice call. Everybody said it was perfect. I always say it was equally as good as the other call. And I put it out today, and nobody even wants to report it because it was so good they don't want to report it. Look, if we had an honest press in this country, we would be so well served. And you know what? When I look at your approval numbers, they're the worst they've ever been in the history of our country. The media, the approval numbers, they are horrible. And you ought to get yourself back, and you ought to put yourself back in a position where people respect the media again. And I know some great journalists, I know some great people in the media, but there aren't enough of them. There's a lot of dishonesty, and many of you I just consider members of the Democrats, and it's a shame. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.